Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle, and welcome back to Direwolf 20's 1.16 mod pack. I think we're in episode 7 today, and today is going to be all about crafting. That's right. We have thermal upgrades we need to get to. Thanks to one of our commenters for offering a suggestion to upgrade our thermal machines. I also want to add a flux cell so that as we do produce power and it's not being used, it can be stored in thermals version of an energy battery, which is called a flux cell. I also went ahead and retrieved all the spawners from the dungeon that we raided on the first episode. Let's take a look at those. There we go. I've brought back, I think, 19 spawners. Everything from skeletons to zombies to creepers to wither skeletons. That's right. Getting a little head start on the old wither action. And we haven't even been to the nether yet. Also, in the last episode, I promised we would use those spawners to make the world's most awesome mob farm. The way we're going to do that in this pack is to make use of a mod called Industrial Forgoing. The startup process for Industrial Forgoing means that we have to make a couple of unique blocks. Let me gather up all the materials I've collected. We're going to leave the spawners in here for now. We need all of this stuff to make things. So the industrial foregoing mod is one of the most useful all around mobs, but in particular, it has amazing mob farm capabilities. It has things like a mob crusher and a mob slaughter factory, but you will note that the recipe for many of these requires plastic. In order to make plastic from the industrial foregoing mod, we're going to need a couple of blocks. The first is a fluid extractor. The fluid extractor pulls latex out of logs, and then we're going to use that latex in a latex processing unit to make plastic. So first up, let's make a fluid extractor. We're going to start with a lightweighted pressure plate, then a pity machine frame, which is just logs, iron ingots, and a block of redstone. So that gets us our fluid extractor. In order to make the latex processing unit, we actually need a bucket of latex. So we'll have to use the fluid extractor before we can make this machine. The fluid extractor does work without power, but you can add a generator to make it go faster. So in this case, I thought we'd use the generator from Integrated Dynamics. This requires an energy battery and a furnace. That energy battery is pretty straightforward. Remember we talked about mineral and crystallized mineral from the integrated dynamics mod plus a block of redstone. Super easy. So let's turn that into a generator and along with the fluid extractor and some logs, we ought to be able to pull some latex out of some trees. In order to move that latex around, we're going to need some pipes. So let's just make some basic fluid pipes, which is just slime, glass, and a little bit of iron so that we can move stuff around. We'll also need energy pipes, which I think I already have crafted. Yes. Let me take a little nap and then we'll go see some of the new construction in the ravine I've been working on between episodes. It's another glorious morning in Minecraft. Okay, here's the start of our ravine construction. I have added some leaves for a little greenery. I made a little waterfall grotto over here in the corner. And then down this way, I finished the path between, there's our ore processing area. And I have finished the path over here and added a funky little bridge so that we can get to this other new area. I also decorated this bare wall. And here is where we're gonna put some of the industrial foregoing items. I forgot an important block. Let's go back to the crafting table. Okay. Because the fluid extractor extracts fluid from logs, we're going to need a way to set logs down in front of it automatically. That is where cyclic comes in handy. And we're going to use the cyclic block placer. It's a very easy recipe. A couple of cobblestone slabs, iron, block of redstone, and a dropper. So did I already, oh, I already made a dropper. So I think we have most of that in my inventory. Yes. And I believe... The block placer, I don't know if it needs redstone or power. Let's take a look. Okay, it just requires redstone. Super easy. Gonna use 
a lever. Like a soul. Here's our block placer. The redstone signal to operate it. In fact, we'll fill it with logs. Woo! Eh, I might need some of those. Put a half stack in for now. And as soon as we give it redstone, it sets that log down in front of us. Let's turn it off for now. We want to put our fluid extractor, the industrial foregoing machines, placed with a functional end on the opposite side. So you place them in the direction you want the functioning side to face. So in this case, it's the sparkly black side. It's going to extract the latex from the log that we set down. And it'll do it slowly over time without power. So you can see that we're getting very slowly some latex. If we put a generator down next to it and give it a little power in the form of a stack of coal, it will power up our fluid extractor and that latex will start being pulled out slightly faster. So two millibuckets at a time at a higher rate. So we should have a bucket of latex here in just a few minutes. And as soon as we have that bucket, we'll be able to craft the latex processing unit. While we're waiting on that latex to collect, let's go do the upgrades to our thermal ore processing area. So I mentioned wanting to make a flux cell from the thermal series. In order to do that, we're gonna need to make a redstone flux cell frame. And then that frame becomes part of the recipe for a flux cell. So let's make our frame. Now the frame requires an electrum gear. Electrum ingots are made from electrum blend and electrum blend is silver and gold ground up. So let's go grind up some silver and gold in our thermal area. This is exactly where we're upgrading this. I came here and there was no power in anything, but it has been doing a great job of processing our ores. We got a lot of zinc and iron processed. Okay, but what we need is gold dust and silver dust. So I'm gonna turn off the auto output function on our pulverizer. So we're gonna put some silver in here to be pulverized and then we'll put eight gold in there to be pulverized. There are our eight silver dust, and here goes our eight gold dust. Ta-da, eight gold dust. Now we can just combine these in any small crafting grid and get electron blend, yay! Now we throw our electron blend in a redstone furnace, and we get 16 electrum ingots. Let's get back to crafting. So we're working on our redstone flux cell, which requires our redstone flux frame, which requires an Electrum gear and a little bit of iron nuggets. And there's our Electrum gear. And let me grab some lead, 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 lead. So that is our Redstone Flux cell frame. Then our Redstone Flux cell requires cured rubber. This is the whole reason I went and collected vines last episode and I forgot to make the rubber, y you know. Okay, the rubber recipe is simple. It's vines around a bucket of water. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we had a sink up here to get the water from? So we're just gonna make this sink from cooking for blockheads. It's simply terracotta, a water bucket, and some iron ingots. And I thought we would just set it up here so that we have it handy uh, and then fill a couple buckets with water. And now we can make our rubber. There's one. Four, four rubber. And then we just chuck them in any, oh, they work in a blast furnace. That's great. Cured rubber from the thermal series. Yay. Okay, I think now we can make our redstone flux cell. Yes. Uh, this will hold 1 million RF. Let's go stick it in our thermal building. Okay, here's our little pitiful power system back here. In fact, I'm just gonna go back one brick. Put the power cell here. And then our Sterling Dynamo back here. So it will feed power into the, the redstone flux cell. 
and it'll be stored even if it's not being used by the machines. Now the cell itself, you need to change the configuration of the sides to actually output power. Orange is out. There we go. Are you doing a thing? No, why not? Do I have to reset this? Like that, there we go. Okay, note to self, you have to re-break the basic energy pipe. And then this one needs, I'm gonna have to move this so I can see. Okay, yes, energy is passing through there into the machines. Yes, awesome. And we'll turn on auto input and auto output so that it can continue. I think I threw some uranium dust in there. Yeah, that's a thing. Woo! Now that we have access to Electrum and a way to store power, I think it's time to upgrade some of our thermal machines. So in order to upgrade our thermal machines, we add integral components. So in this case, the first tier is hardened integral component, which is made of invar ingots and a gold gear. And once we've added that to a machine, we ought to be able to apply some of the upgrades themselves. So for example, for our dynamo, we could apply an auxiliary reaction chamber, which would increase our fuel energy efficiency. We can also do things like make the RF capacity and transfer greater, expand a tank capacity, increase the chance for auxiliary outputs. For example, we get nickel when we grind up iron. So let's start with making hardened integral components for our dynamo and maybe our two processing machines, the pulverizer and the redstone furnace. So let's see if we can make four of these. We're gonna need Invar. Invar is made from Invar blend. It's just two ground up iron dust and one nickel dust. Or we could go the route of making an induction smelter. Let's see how hard that is. Oh, that's pretty easy. A blast furnace, a machine frame, redstone flux, and invar gears. Oh, we still need to make invar, okay. So we still need some iron dust and some nickel dust. Let me take a nap, go grind some of that up, and we'll get to making some thermal series upgrades. Okay, I think we have enough invar. The rest is being cooked up in the redstone furnace that we can make an induction smelter. I went ahead and made the machine frame and the redstone flux coil. We just need two Invar gears. Ta-da! There we have an induction smelter, yay! I'm actually gonna take the sawmill away for a minute. Let the induction smelter power up. So here's some Invar, here's some nickel and some iron. So I put two iron and one nickel in an induction smelter we should end up with three Invar, yeah. Okay, now we can make our hardened integral component. We need a gold gear and the Invar, and there we go. Okay, we're gonna need three of these. So, well, four, let's just upgrade everybody. Do we have enough? Yeah, four of them, yay! Okay, here we go, let's, Augment the Sterling Dynamo. That makes us produce 80 RF a tick. Now it is gonna go through fuel faster. This is not affecting the efficiency at all. It's just gonna produce energy at a higher rate, which is fine. Um, I wonder if we can upgrade our thermal flux cell. If I add an augment, oh, now it holds 2 million RF. Yeah, let's leave that. Okay, what do we think? I think the redstone furnace probably needs an upgrade. And there it goes. Notice as soon as we put that augment in there, how fast it started to go. Oh, that's so much better. And it holds 100,000 RF. And here we have our pulverizer, which holds 50,000 RF. And as soon as we add the hardened component, now it'll hold 100,000 RF and it should go much faster. So if I want to grind up a couple of pieces of iron, oh yeah, that's so much better. 
Yay. We will absolutely be facing a power shortage soon as this is all currently running on coal power. However, I have plans for how we're going to solve our power problems in the future. Now that we finished upgrading our thermal machines, let's go check on our fluid extractor. Yes, we have an entire bucket of latex. So let's scoop that up by just right clicking on the block with an empty bucket. And now we should be able to craft our latex processing unit. So we need a furnace, a pity machine frame, and there is our latex processing unit. Woohoo! Okay, so the way we use this, so we've used the block placer using just redstone to place down spruce logs for us. The fluid extractor is facing those logs and it's pulling the latex out of it. Now we need to take the latex and put it into the latex processing unit. So I'm going to set it down next to the generator so that it also gets power. And then we're going to use our basic fluid pipe, not in the unit, on the unit. And I believe this is happiest when it's doing things from the top. Oh, we also need water. Okay, let's go make another sink. So our latex processing unit is going to need water. I'm actually just gonna set the sink underneath it. Had no success with the basic fluid pipes from refined pipes. Let's try fluid cable. So we hook them up the same way, but you need the cable wrench to make them actually do something. In other words, extract. And the way you change the cable wrench's mode is to left click it. You see how we got that message disable, extract, disable, extract. You want to make sure it's in extract mode. And then when you right click it, you'll see that little white outline appeared. So now we should be seeing latex. Yes. In here, let's do the same thing on the bottom where the sink is. Okay, now you have water. Okay, so we are extracting the sink is hiding under there. We're extracting water from the sink into the latex processing unit. It's getting latex and I think for every 80 latex, it will make one tiny rubber, tiny dry rubber. We need nine tiny dry rubbers to make one dry rubber. And one dry rubber in a furnace makes one plastic. And that is how you get started with industrial foregoing in terms of making plastic. Because you have to have all these things to make that plastic. So let's look at it one more time. You can either set down a piece of wood by hand in front of the fluid extractor or use something from another mod like cyclic to place down a log in front of it. The fluid extractor will pull latex out of a log without power, but if you add a generator, it'll make it go faster. The latex processing unit absolutely needs power in order to work. It also needs water. You take the latex that's being pulled out of the log from the fluid extractor. I, excuse me, I'm trying to give a demonstration here, zombie. Where were we? The fluid extractor produces the latex that is used by the latex processing unit to make tiny dry rubber. Someday. It might be 120 latex. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that was 100. 100 millibuckets of latex makes one tiny dry rubber. Although not as power intensive as our ore processing area, this still does have a power requirement and we'll address that when we upgrade our power system in the next couple of episodes. But I think that's all we have time for today. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on in the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And remember, as always, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>